This is Jeff and Wilmer at Badrum, and this is a beekeeping video, and we're going to call it finally a honey flow. Now, have a look at this frame here. I, I can't decap this frame without showing it on the video. Where did you get that from, Jeff? Down at uh, my main bee site. Right. Look at that now. And this is what beekeepers' dreams are made of. It's been about nine months since we've had frames like this. Admittedly, we did a lot of splits for bee customers in the spring. We set our hives back a little bit by doing that. Well, quite a bit, because we must have done about 40 splits. The honey flow, like there was a bit of a honey flow, and it just completely stopped. This was the worst summer that I've had. Since beekeeping started. Since in 30 years, yeah. For, for over two months, the little bit of honey I was getting it only took about 10 or 12 minutes and the bees were at the honey trying to eat the honey out of the frames. Yeah, they were really... And they were really hungry. It was a struggle. I, to, I could only spend about half an hour there and then bring the frames home. Otherwise, there would just be a massive amount of bees trying to eat the honey. I haven't got that at the moment. <laughs> That's good. And even though I took this honey out, there's a lot of frames in the hives that are filling up and, and that's really good. Um, this. Yes. Right. Here's another frame here that I'm pretty happy with. Oh it's beautiful too. Isn't that a ripper? Oh I haven't seen things like that for a long time. No. We saw on television how that the flying foxes were down in Brisbane and there's a big mass of flying foxes down there. The bloke who, they, who was being interviewed said that the flying foxes that normally visit the Sunshine Coast didn't come to the Sunshine Coast at that particular time because of the gum trees didn't flower like they normally do. Yes. So uh, I thought, yeah, well, that, that's right. That makes sense because this particular gum tree that I drive past every time, you know, when we're going down to our bees, and we featured that in one of our winter videos, it was just chock a block full of flowers and there was all flowers chewed up on the ground you know by the lorikeets it, it didn't flower so that sort of explains why we haven't seen any decent honey for yeah the dry um, weather really threw everything out yeah it? so anyway we've got a honey flow now i used to have this bottom box sitting on two buckets which was a bit flimsy and I didn't like that idea. For years I've been thinking about making a stand to put this on. So I made that about three months ago. Haven't had a chance to use it. So this is the first time I've had the chance to use it. Great. As you can see here, look. Lovely. Yeah, so that sort of works good. Beautiful honey. Moving so on. we haven't had enough honey to be able to use this setup. I've only been getting about 100 kilos every couple of weeks, so I've been using this one to decap into, and then I've just been putting the buckets on the stool and just letting the honey flow into the buckets. Uh, this box here has eight frames in it. I don't think these are as good as those other two frames I showed, but I'm just going to put it up on there. Still quite heavy, but. This one has seven frames in it, and these are the first ones that I took out of a hive. Now, it, it is also heavy. Now, have a look at these frames. Look at that. One, two, three, look at that. Four, Long five. time since we've seen that view. Yeah. <laughs> really what beekeepers this is why you go to all the trouble to maneuver your brood and then you know, try to get nice young queen bred and that all leads up to this uh, here's another good frame here oh, look at that one oh, beautiful <laughs> that's that's all it's even better What a beautiful aroma coming out of this honey. How many boxes did we get this time, Jeff? We've got about 13. So oh, that's really good. Uh, with all of the 
frames that aren't like the ones I'm showing. Yeah. yeah even if we bring it down to 11 mm. of, you know, a chocker block full. Yep. It should give us just under 300 kilos. All right, now, I want to show you this frame here. Now, that is just a beautiful frame of freshly drawn comb from out of the honey box. If you were looking for some frames for the brood, this would be a perfect frame to put into the brood. Why is that, Jeff? Well, it's fully drawn. Mm. Now, when you put this in amongst the brood, the bees will clean up the honey off it and the queen will go straight into it and start laying. Now that is 100% worker comb. There's just a few holes down the bottom that are drone comb. Now you could almost say it's 100% worker comb. Mm. And it's the same on the other side. Conversely, a frame like that, that has had a couple of generations of brood in it, would be just perfect to put back in the honey section because the cocoons that are left behind will strengthen the cone and then that would be just ideal for extracting honey. A lot of people have trouble with freshly drawn comb out of the honey section because the comb blows out. Now this stayed together for a couple of reasons. One reason is to keep my wires fairly tight before I embed the foundation into it and also I'm using a heavier foundation. The bees are very particular when it comes to the brood. If some, no matter how good you embed the wire into the foundation, sometimes I'll just chew along the wire on each wire, on, sometimes on both ends, and then that bit will sort of turn around and then you've got a whole heap of drone cone that you don't necessarily want. They're not so fussy when it comes to the honey. They do build it out beautifully when it comes to the honey. And then if you want to, then you can gently harvest the honey out of it and then put it into the brood. Just a beautiful frame to put in the brood. Oh well, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye.